Hi, this is part 27 of ASP.NET. In the previous video, we have discussed how to declare the connection string globally in web.config file. In this video, we will discuss about how to work with execute rider. Already, we have discussed previously about execute non-query method and execute scalar method. Right? Whenever you want to insert, uh, whenever you want to perform insert or delete or update operation, we have to use execute non-query method. Whenever you want to perform select operation, then you have to use execute reader method. Now, referring select or uh, select operation, you can use execute scalar and execute reader method. Whenever you want to return a single cell value, then we have to use execute uh, scalar method. Is it clear? And whenever you want to return a single uh, row or single column or multiple rows, then we have to use execute reader method. Is it clear? So let us assume that here I have one database. In the database, I have one table with name EMP. Let us see here. And here I have E number, E name, as well as salary. And here I have some values 101, some Anil, some 20,000. And here I'll give 102. And here I'll give Sunil. And here 30,000. And here 103. And here Ajay, some 40,000. This is my table. Now in middle, I have my server application is there. Here your ADO.NET is there in middle actual. This is your server. Okay, now let us see. Now this is my browser. So what is my design? Let us say I'll explain you the design requirement. And here I'll try to enter employee number. And here I'll try to take one search button. Search. So I want to display the employee name as well as salary. This is my requirement. Is it clear? Whenever user enters the employee number and click on search button, I want to display the employee name as well as salary. So here you have employee name is there and salary is there. So when I enter 101, I want to get the employee name of 101, that is Anil and 20,000. Display that Anil in a text box to 20,000 in text box. So this is your server actually. This is your server. In server, I have my ADO.NET program is there. So here, how to work with this, let us see. Step number one, create the connection. Create the connection by using SQL connection class. We already know that one. We can create the connection by using SQL connection class. That is step number one. Okay, now. Nah? And step number two, open the connection. Open the connection by using open method. So here you can write simply con dot open off. Step number three, pass the query. Pass the query by using SQL command class. SQL command class. So how to pass the query? SQL command cmd is equal to New SQL command of we already know how to pass the query, but let us assume my query is something like this select a star from EMP where E number is equal to something like text box one dot text, something like this. That is one not one actually text box one dot text. Let us assume that I entered one not one. This is my query. So step number one create the connection, then open the connection, then pass the query. Then step number four, execute the query. Step number four is what? Execute the query. So here, if you observe clearly, you have to analyze that uh, what is the result of the query. The result of the query is single value na, single row na, single column. Na, what you have to identify? Select star from EMP where E number is equal to one not one. So the result of the query is what? Single row. The result of the query is single row. This one not one until twenty thousand. So we have to use execute reader method. CMD dot execute reader. CMD dot execute reader. So method must have return type now. If the return type is int, method will return integer value. If the return type is float, method will return float value. If the return type is class, then method will return object. So execute reader return type is SQL data reader. SQL data reader is a predefined class actually. Is it clear? Execute reader is a method available in SQL command class. That method will return what? Some uh, collection. And the result of the query will be stored in this particular object actual. So here SQL data reader is a predefined class. There is one predefined class. The name of the class is SQL data reader. Okay, now that class can serve some ready-made what? Uh, here we have some predefined class. The name of the class is SQL Data Reader. Okay, now this is one predefined class. And this class can serve some properties. One is 
Hasros properties. Hasros. Here I will try to write something like set as well as get. Another one is read. Read is also a property. Return type is bool. Okay na. Here also you have something like set as well as get. This are, so SQL data reader is a predefined class. That class consists of some properties like has rows, read. These all are the properties. Are you following? What is the use of this? Uh, if you want to access the properties, object is required now. But we cannot create object for SQL data reader. Whenever you call this method execute reader, this execute reader method will return the object of SQL data reader. And here we are calling this method now execute reader. When you call this execute reader, it will uh, create the object for data reader and that result is assigned to DR. Okay, now first create the connection, open the connection, pass the query, execute the query. Okay, now in order to access the properties or methods, reference is required. Here the reference is DR. So execute the query. Now, whenever we execute the query, what will happen? Now, the result of the query here, when we execute the query, whenever we execute the query, then whenever we execute the query, then the result of the query, then the result of the query will store, will store in result set, will store in result set. Result set is a temporary memory that was allocated on server. So what is the result of the query? Here you can see. Here you have something like what? Uh, the records will come now. E number and here E name and here salary. Here 101, Anil and 20,000. Because my query is select start from EMP where E number is equal to 101. So the result of the query is single row. So this is your result set. Result set is a temporary memory that was allocated on server. First step is create the connection by using SQL connection class. Second step is open the connection by using open method. Third step is pass the query by using SQL command class. Fourth step is execute the query by using SQL data reader. Now execute the query by using execute reader method. Execute reader is a predefined method available in SQL command class. So you can call the method by using object name. The return type of the method is SQL data reader. So whenever we execute the query, then the result of the query will store in result set. The result of the query is stored in result set. Result set is an object actually. That object is assigned to the DR reference. Now step number five. Step number five, what to do? Check whether result set has rows. Check whether. Check whether result set. Check whether result set has rows. Okay, now here has rows is a Boolean property. Which will return either true or false. If the result set has rows, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return what? False means what? For example, if I write a query, select star from EMP where E number is equal to 105. Now there is no 105 record in the table now. So what result you will get? No result will come because there is no uh, record in the database now. Nothing value will be stored in the result set. If I write the query, select star from EMP where E number is equal to 101. So the result is stored in result set. 101 result is stored in result set. So has rows will return true. If the result set don't have any rows, has rows will return what? False. And whatever the data that is stored in database, we need to fetch the data and store in server. Either in variable or array or object. Here result set is one type of collection actually. Okay now. Now check whether result set has rows or not. Next point. If result set has rows, if in order to check that has rows, we have to call this property. I will show you an example. If result set has rows, what to do then read the data then read the data from result set from result set and display and display in text boxes and display in text boxes if the result set has rows then read the data from result set and display in what text boxes are you following everyone display in text boxes something like that is it clear? Check whether result set has rows. If result set has rows, then read the data from result set and display in text boxes. Okay. Generally, in result set, each and every column can be identified by using index number. Always the index number starts from 0. Here, 0, 1, and 2. So, if you want to access the values, you can use dr of 0. 
some DR of 1 means Anil will come, DR of 2 means 20,000 will come. And finally, step number 7, close the connection. So, what is first of all of you? Create the connection using SQL connection class, open the connection, pass the query by using SQL command class, then execute the query by using execute reader method. So, whenever we execute the query, then the result of the query will store in result set. Now, once when the result of the query is stored in result set, now check whether result set has rows or not. If result set has rows, then read the data from result set and display in the text boxes. In order to access the data from result set, we can use this indexes. Every column can be identified by using index number. Always index number start from zero. So this is how you can work with execute reader method. In the next video, I will show you the practically example I will show you. Thank you. For more videos, try to subscribe to this channel.